Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Hi, I'm Elisa Bani Assad, and I am an associate professor of teaching in computer science at the University of British Columbia. One of the things that I really love about teaching is the interplay between me and the students and the way that we're generating ideas together. And I was really worried that we would lose that when we went online. I was worried that it would feel like I was just speaking into a void and that I wasn't getting anything back from the students and that we weren't able to build anything together. Have you found that you've been able to evolve your software more straightforwardly? But if anything, it enhanced the experience of feeling like students were even closer to me. And so everyone's voice is kind of equal in an online environment, which is wonderful for this process of together discovering more about each topic. One of the things that I started doing spontaneously when we went online was actually having more social connection with the students. This is something that I never did before, but I knew really well that everybody, including myself, was feeling really, really isolated. And so we started just having kind of hangouts where we actually wouldn't even talk about school. And it helped build up a real personal connection, which was so nice because I was really able to become a person to them and they were really able to become people to me. And it was actually a really special experience. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome back to the live stream update. This is such a strange situation for everyone to be in, that we're all stuck at home, feeling very alone. So being part of an online learning community means that you have a common purpose with a lot of other people, all of whom are trying to do the same thing you're doing. It can transport you out of your isolation into a joint activity. What can students do to make online learning work for them? What have you found? Like, you've all been having to grapple with this. What have, any tips? Some recommendations that my students have made for succeeding in online learning are to set up a separation between work life and home life, even if you're just in one single room. So have an area that's dedicated to work. My bedroom is only for relaxing. That's a really good point. Another really fascinating suggestion is to remember to go outside. So you do like a fake commute. Does anybody I, do a fake I commute? I do a fake yeah. commute, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a good idea, I never thought of that. Good idea. And then when you get back, you can really feel like you've arrived at class and you can engage in that way. Even if you're just watching a video that you've downloaded, you'll be able to set up that boundary between home life and work life. I think we can all agree that if it hadn't been for the online community, this pandemic experience would have been really, really different. It would have been a lot lonelier and a lot more confusing and a lot more frightening. And because we can all engage online, a lot of our lives have been able to continue on. And computer scientists and developers in the software industry is plunging forward into a future that we had always thought might be out there, but suddenly is very present. It's a devastating time for many. It's a very frightening time for many, but it's also an extremely exciting time to be in computer science. Okay, awesome. Thanks, everybody. Hello. See you later. Bye. Bye, bye. Good to see y'all. Virtual hugs. <laughs> Welcome to UBC Faculty of Science. We are so excited to see you. For now, we'll be seeing you online, but this is not forever. You will be beginning a journey online that will continue incredibly richly in person.